This is going to be a short one. In my last tutorial covering dynamic recursive subdivision, I demonstrated a method to seamlessly loop a 3D noise texture. There are plenty of practical benefits to having a noise textures loop, so I'm recording this chapter as a separate video for all of you interested in just this part. I'm keeping it simple and starting with a regular grid, divided in 30 rows and 30 columns, followed by a set position node. Add a combine XYZ node to the offset input. We'll drive the Z channel with a noise texture. You can see the grid deform. The noise texture depends on the position vector of each point of the geometry. So, if we connect a position field into the vector input, the result should be the same. Scale the noise down to have a smoother transition. To have the noise animated and loop, we will rotate the position vector of each point a full 360 degrees during the course of our scene duration. Insert a vector rotate node, play with the angle amount and see the noise deform the geometry. I'm leaving the default Z as the axis of rotation. You can experiment as you see fit. Now comes the looping part. Add a range mapper node to the angle input. Feed our scene frame number as the driving value. We will map the frame number range from 0 to the end of the scene into an angle value ranging from 0 to 360 degrees or 2 times pi or tau. Hit play and enjoy the looping animation. This is what I explained in my long tutorial, but as someone pointed out in a Twitter comment, currently the noise is rotated around the origin, the 000, 000 coordinate. This means that the further the points are from the center, the faster the noise deforms them. That might not be noticeable in most situations, but let me show you another trick to counter that problem. The Vector Rotate node accepts a vector field as the center of rotation. Adding an offset to each point and using this new vector as the center for rotation means that now the faces will have an equal rotation speed because all the centers are based on the relative position. The amount of offset now determines the noise speed, so now you can scale the noise and control the speed separately. You're free to add different offset values on other channels as well for a more complex result. I prefer this method more than trying to animate and loop the W value of the noise. Hope you like it and find it useful in your projects. As always, if you like it, please share the knowledge.